The cryptocurrency has been retreating from last month's all-time high of nearly $74,000, fueled by a wave of demand from spot Bitcoin ETFs. Joining me now, Post 9, Anthony Scaramucci of Skybridge Capital. Welcome back. It's good to see you here. Thanks, Scott. Good so, to be here. So maybe the ETFs played a role. I think we can all agree on, on that. But Bitcoin's back. Why? What are all the reasons you think? Well, I mean, I think the ETF was a big reason. I think the regulatory hurdle where the United States government is now allowing a QCIP to be attached to Bitcoin is a big reason. And I think you know Wall Street as well as anybody. When Wall Street gets a product like this, it's like a selling machine and it's generating lots of demand for the product. And I think we're surprised that there's over $10 billion in the first quarter of new flows for something like Bitcoin. Why? Why are you surprised? Uh, well, it took it took a year for GLD, the gold ETF, to get to $10 billion. And so this did it in 25 percent of the time. And, you know, not to bore everybody, but Bitcoin's the network spits out about 900 coins a day. That's going to get cut in half probably April 20th or so. And so you're going down to 450 coins and you probably have two to three thousand coins of base demand. Uh, at a time when the supply is going to get cut. So they said earlier that Bitcoin, uh, the, the price of Bitcoin, the ETF was priced in. They're now saying that the halving is priced in. I don't believe that either. I think I think Bitcoin has a lot more to go here. What, what do you think of um, hedges against inflation, interest rates? I've heard some people cite currency devaluations around the world playing a, right. a, a significant role as well. How, how would you assess so I, that? I see Bitcoin still as a technical asset that's still adopting. Uh, it's about a 6% uh, global adoption in terms of world's population. That puts it around 1998 for Web 1, just to give you the arc of it. Uh, so I don't see it that way, that there's a big currency issue. I don't think it becomes a Bitcoin standard, but I do think it becomes a digital store of value akin to gold. And so what's, what's that issue for everybody right now? Where should that trade to if we're in price discovery mode? I'm just simply tr saying it could trade to half of the valuation of gold, which is a six to eight, ten times move from here. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with great volatility. Uh, but I want investors that are in Skybridge and know us to be a part of this story. Do you think it's correlated still somewhat to, you know, either risk assets, broadly mm -hmm. speculative assets? Yeah. And if you do, does it ever divorce itself from that? In other words, if there's a sizable pullback in the NASDAQ and the momentum trade, does that go along with it? Right. So it seems like it's sort of decoupling a little bit. Yesterday, the market was weak. Bitcoin was strong. There's a little bit of a decoupling. You mentioned the inflation issue. Let's just point this out to the viewers. Uh, the U.S. dollar's lost about 22 percent of its value since January of 2020. Bitcoin's gone up eight to one. Now, you can say, OK, well, Anthony, you're, you're, you're dot plotting. You're picking a high dot for Bitcoin. Maybe Bitcoin drops 50 percent due to its volatility. But I think the arc of it is an inflation hedge. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a short term inflation hedge. But if you own Bitcoin, anybody that's owned Bitcoin in a rolling four year period of time, They've actually done well, Scott. They've never lost money if they're able to hold on to it for, for periods like that. Do you have in your mind a target level as people still try and throw those out, which you think so, is reasonable? So I've been consistent with this, and I, I basically say that the halving's going to come on or about April 20th. Uh, typically, what's happened over the 18 months since the halving, you get a 4X move in Bitcoin. Let's be a little bit more conservative than that. I've been saying that it's about $170,000 for this cycle. Uh, but Bitcoin is a cyclical product, in my opinion. Uh, uh, waves of people come into it. The demand is there. And then it goes through, you know, pulls and drags, if you will. So I think it gets to 170000 by the end of the cycle. We also like Solana, fully disclosed. We have smaller positions like Algorand and, and, and smaller positions like Avalanche. We're looking at some other tokens. But Bitcoin's a big kahuna. So obviously we think of Bitcoin, we think of FTX. Think of FTX. I think of in some respects, you got, they purchased a 30% stake in your firm. They did. You got to know Sam very well. I did. So the sentence recently comes down. What were your thoughts when you heard the number? Was it severe enough? What, what are your just general thoughts on how this no, has all I'm, transpired? I, I, I think I'm getting soft in my old age, okay? I felt very bad for the kid, okay? He hurt my business. He hurt my reputation. We sold a piece of our business. He lied to a lot of people. He hurt a lot of people. Uh, but when you really look at him clinically, he looks like a very damaged guy. Uh, he'll likely spend 18 to 20 years 
of his future in that sentence. If you talk to the bankruptcy people, there could be 90 plus billion dollars of assets that they're going to be able to divvy up among people. Uh, people will get their money back, but it was dollarized. So what does that mean? If I own six bitcoins at $17,000, I'm getting 17,000 times six worth of value from the bankruptcy, but Bitcoin went to 67,000. So a lot of people upset about that as well. Uh, when I heard the sentence, I thought it was light, uh, but you know, I'm not unhappy with that sentence for Sam. Uh, I feel bad for him and his family. And listen, he'll come out as a 50-year-old man, and we'll have to see what he does with his life when he comes out. You, you know, I'm curious as to what you made of, of part of the, the argument from his own legal team to the very issue of what you talked about, about mm -hmm. the investors. Well, you know, they argued for leniency partly because they said, well, look at, you know, they, investors didn't lose any money, right. but Bitcoin's rallied back to, to where it has. You, right. you, you, seem to take issue with that I don't, that I don't, notion. I don't, I, don't, I don't like the argument because Sam broke the law. Sam committed fraud. He was found guilty. Uh, the prosecutors knew that before the trial started. They had a 98, 99 percent conviction rate. That argument should have been made before the trial started and we wasted the taxpayers' money on the trial. And then they should have said, OK, we're going to plead guilty to this. And he probably would have gotten a reduced sentence. I think the problem is that he's got some mental illness I think the judge did take into consideration because if you looked at the sentencing grid, the sentence was relatively on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of duration. Um, but they should have made that argument earlier. Somebody that should have gotten to Sam, and maybe he's just a hard guy to get to, and say, look, you're obviously guilty, uh, plead out, and you'll get a lower and a reduced sentence, and you'll have some longer chance in your freedom to reclaim your life. He didn't do that, and, uh, but look, it's behind us. Here's something that people don't like me saying, I'm just going to share it with you. I think Gary Gensler did the whole industry a favor. He had the Bitcoin futures ETF approved in November of 2021. If you just follow the administrative law, he should have approved the spot ETF shortly thereafter. Uh, he didn't do that. Okay, and so he got sued for something that's called arbitrary and capricious administration of the law. But the one plus year delay in the spot ETF exposed over leverage in the system, mm. exposed fraud in the system. And so I do think he deserves credit for that. Whatever my issues are with Gensler and the SEC as it relates to crypto overall, this is a sturdier 67,000 than the prior 68, 69,000 in November of 2021. That's an interesting perspective you have.